You want a treat? Do you mean to tell me if I don't take that little red pill and become a pod person, you will kill me? I can, and I will. I think you're bluffing. If you have that kind of power, why take the pill? Why don't you just change me now? You think I'm bluffing? Look at those fish over there. What? What did you do? Those fish no longer cease to breathe. Death is imminent. They will slowly decompose. Oh my god, you're serious. What a fiend. Take the pill now. I'm running out of patience. Oh crap. Can I at least have a couple of stiff drinks before I do it? Very well, but hurry. I'll just have a couple of belts of this. Boy, that's the real stuff. Buzz didn't cheat me. I owe him an apology. I am losing my patience. Take the red pill. Excellent. Excellent. Open your mouth and let me see if the pill is gone. Ah. Open your mouth wider. Now finish your other drink and lay down for the pill to take effect. I don't want it. I've lost my taste for it. So be it. Oh, I feel funny. I'm so sleepy. I need to lay down. When you wake up, a new tickle at Flocket will be born. I'm sorry, Buzz. I doubted you. You're no crook. I'm the crook. Goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> my power is now within my grasp. I will take over the world to the new world order and to me, the supreme leader of the known people. Greetings, supreme leader. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel weak. What did you do? What was in that drink? The red pill? Have you ever heard of a Mickey Finn? Well, that was a tickle fin. I knew you couldn't leave a shot of whiskey go to waste. You may be a power hungry commie rat, but down deep, you're still a gnome. No! No! Tickle F. Lockett, a gnome of many faults, but far from evil, has dodged the proverbial bullet. One last word of warning. Beware of power-hungry wolves in sheep's clothing, otherwise known as politicians, or you too may very well end up in the Twilight Zone. Well, welcome everybody to part three of this 1930s Mystery Auburn Radio. Thank you. Now you're looking at the cabinet here. Oh, really? And I have completed the finish on it. And it was kind of a rocky ride. I'm not going to show it to you right now. I'm going to show you what I did to it. And the big mistake I made. But I did correct it. So I think everything's fine with this. Now, uh, you're probably wondering, what's this thing here? Well, this is a piece of acrylic. And I've decided to put a, a see-through acrylic back on this. What? As you know, this didn't have a back on it, but we're going to put one on it. I thought it would be neat to have a see-through back. Then you can take a look at the tubes and the beauty of the radio, especially my red uh, output transformer core. Insert laugh here. <laughs> so this needs to be trimmed. 
What I think I'll do is, uh, once I got it trimmed, I think I'll drill maybe three holes in it for some air. While I work on this, take a look at the cabinet work I did. Now it's time to work on this cabinet here. First thing I'll do is take these nails out of here. They're very loose. You got a lot of problems, don't you? See if we can peel this grill cloth off. Oh, it's just gorgeous. This wood looks real dry. Something must be done about that. There's a lot of crazing on here. So when I sand that, it's just gonna flake off, so. This top may cause me some problems. Lady, you must be psychic. Nothing's ever easy. You got that right. I wonder if I can get this off here, this auburn plate here. Go ahead, my friend, but move very carefully. Easy does it. Okay, I got that off. That's held in there by very small Decorative nails. <laughs> Put that somewhere safe. The first thing I'm going to do here is just glue these sides here. This is loose here. It's a little loose here. And loose here. So I'm going to glue that before I do anything. So let me get that done first. Okay, that's all three sides glued. This uh, glue dries pretty fast, so we can start sanding and see what we get. Keep your fingers crossed on this. Yeah, why? Okay, it's time to sand, and what better time to sand than 5 a.m. in the morning? Well, you're crazy. I like to get up early and do this stuff. So I think I'll start on the top here. Now, this is going to give me some problems here. This, I may have to take all this off, because it's just flaking off like crazy up here. Let me see if I can zoom in there. I can see it. See that? Yes, yes, I see. So, let's just start sanding and see what happens. Oh, that's better. Then I can just uh, sand it a little bit more. Maybe put some Howards or some, some stain over it and just clear coat it enough so it, uh, it covers up some of these deep crevices here. I really don't know. I'm playing this by ear. Let's try the front here. After this, your reputation isn't going to be worth much. Let's try some steel wool on it. Well, I don't think the sandpaper is the best. This is like 300 grit. Scusi, what's happening here? 
Okay, well, I'm just going to continue doing this. I'm going to try some of this. Howard's Restore Finish. If that doesn't work, hmm. <laughs> we'll try it. Now, I don't have any undies today. Oh! So I'm just going to use a rag. When you apply Restore a Finish, it immediately becomes part of the existing finish. Restore Finish's penetrating color enters the finish and blends out the surface blemish. That looks darker on camera than it actually does in person here. Let's try it on the face here. Immediately wipe dry, and the finish is permanently restored. That might work. Maybe, but I doubt it. I can tell it's cleaned up a little bit, but still looks beat up and old. Let's try the sides here. Now, as you can see, the color penetrates the finish and blends out the nicks and scratches. Well, I guess we'll go with that. Okay. Well, here's the station selector dial. You know, I gotta clean that up. But I think I'll run some tests and I'll use the back of it here. Looks like it's got glue on there. And I've got some lacquer thinner here. Let me see if that will come off with lacquer thinner. So I'm going to dip my uh, swab oh! into the lacquer thinner. We'll see what happens here. It looks like it's dissolving. What do you think? Yep. I basically want something that will uh, clean it, but uh, not damage it. It looks like it's already in rough shape on the other side, but you can test it here on the back. Let me scrub that a little harder off camera. Wow! Well, it didn't take too long. It took all the gumminess off it. Since that worked okay on that side, let's see what happens when we, uh, Use some on this side. Now this side looks like it, it's got some lacquer or shellac or varnish. See that goop? Let's see if we can get that off. Yeah. Not bad. Well, it took it off. Let's see if we can get some of this off here without wrecking the, uh, the lettering down here. You gotta be very careful on it. So far, so good. Now we must be even more careful. I think it's working! Sticky. Not too shabby, eh? It's not doing any damage to it. Let's try the rag soaked with uh, lacquer thinner and try to take some more of that goop off. Wonderful, wonderful! Okay, that was a success. I just wanted to get that goop off, clean it up a little bit, but still leave the patina on there. I think that looks neat. Let's try to do the other one. There's the other one. It's where the volume control switch goes on. It's the one that says made in USA and then volume up here. Excellent! Excellent! I worked pretty good. I'm going to shoot these with a clear coat on there. Okay, this has got uh, varnish or shellac or something on it too.
Let's get in there. Let me finish this up. Then we'll clear coat them. Okay, there's the inside of the cabinet. You can see here I repaired the uh, the loose wood here. I glued this veneer down. It looks pretty good. Now since this wood is so dry, and it is dry, if I threw a match on there, the thing would probably go up in flames. So I think I'll use some of this restore finish in here just to uh, just to condition the wood there. Let's see what it looks like. Oh yeah, you can hear it just uh, soaking it up. It's a big sucking sound. Thirsty wood. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna do the rest of it and then uh, we'll shoot it with some clear. Okay, I'm going to explain uh, the difference between the uh, TRF radio, which is the radio that Miss Moose has here, and the Super Heterodyne radio. So the TRF radio tunes the raw radio signal through the antenna using uh, an RF radio frequency amplifier tube. Then that signal goes to the detector tube, which removes the carrier from the signal and then sends that signal out to the output tube where that's amplified and then sent to the speakers. Now on a super heterodyne radio, that will amplify the raw radio signal and mix it or heterodyne the signal to a different fixed frequency called the IF. Then that signal is amplified and filtered before it's sent to the detector tube where it's stripped of the IF signal and then demodulated and amplified through the output tube, which then sends that to the speakers. So what's the difference? Well, a TRF radio is a simpler design, but its selectivity and sensitivity is not very good. On the other hand, the Super Heterodyne radio is more complicated design, but it's more sensitive and the selectivity is better. So as the old saying, you get what you pay for. So in these days, the TRF radios that were sold were cheaper than the Super Heterodyne radios that were out. So Miss Moose, your radio was cheap in those days, but look at it now. Still working, and still working pretty damn good. Okay, let's try it. I'm just going to use this uh, Rust-Oleum lacquer. So here goes nothing. And now for the first time, we are bringing to you the full story of what happened on that fateful day. Well, that's the first coat. I'm going to let that dry real good. We'll try it again. Okay, it's time for the second coat. And uh, you can see pretty clearly how this has got the uh, peaks and valleys. So that's what I was worried about. I really didn't want to take the finish all off, but I think I would just put enough coats of uh, clear on that, it'll be okay. All right, but I hope we aren't making a mistake. So next time you see this, I'll have all the finish on it. It's looking pretty funky, as you can see. Oh my goodness. Okay, stop the tape. Boy, did I mess up here. Why I used high gloss lacquer, who knows? So if you make mistakes, well, you just gotta go back and fix them. So what I had to do here is I had to sand off all that high gloss lacquer. Gentlemen, pain and torture are grim bedfellows. Oh, brother. 
So there it is after I sanded all that gloss lacquer off. It looked pretty good. Then it was time to recoat it with the correct lacquer. Buzz, if you mess up my radio, I'll come over and mess you up. Well, there's the finished product. I think I accomplished what I set out to do, making this uh, look old, but uh, keeping the character of it. You can tell this has been cleaned up pretty good. You can actually see the outline now. You can still see the dings and the radio but it just doesn't look dirty. It just looks old now. You can see the grain patterns and the unevenness. Not bad. It's not good either. I believe this finish will last for many, many years. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, this should give you a better idea of what it's going to look like. I just laid these on here. Uh, I'd like to stroke it. I like these, uh, these little stains here that show through. <laughs> and when I get the grill cloth on there, I think it's going to look even better. But I must say, I like it. I like it a lot. And now here's a word from our sponsor. The other day I bought an SSD hard drive for my laptop. This is what I use to make all my videos with. And it was really getting slow. So I got this at Best Buy. It's a one terabyte SSD drive. It's uh, great. It's all solid state. No mechanical drive, no spinning or anything like that. So let me show you what happens after I installed it. Normally it took over a minute to boot up. So I'm going to turn it on now and show you how fast it boots up. It's great. Here we go. There we go. It took less than 15 seconds. If you're thinking about buying one, it sure helped me out. Can't beat it. Yeah, yeah, skip the commercial, will you? Well, I made this sort of a, maybe a template for a, the back. We'll go on something like that. I made it so there's some room here for the air to escape. Plus we got holes here. So what do you think? Do you think that'll look good if it's, uh, if it's in clear acrylic? You'd be able to see through the back? No. So I'm going to uh, take this and transfer this on here and cut this out. This is going to be fun.
After I found that schematic made by the Transformer Corporation of America, I looked up this Clarion model, and lo and behold, on Etsy, somebody had sold a, uh, a radio just like the one I've got. Although this one is labeled Clarion. You can see right there on the nameplate, mine says Auburn, this one says Clarion. And it's the same style plate. And there's additional pictures on here. Here's a picture from the side and the front. This one looks like uh, it's in mint condition. There's another picture. I wonder if this had been stripped. Now it doesn't tell you how much it sold for, but I'm glad I stumbled upon this. The next picture shows the tubes in there, exactly the same as Miss Moose's radio. There's another shot of the uh, electronics in it, same components. And there's the back of it. That's kind of a rare picture. It's made out of wood. So there you go. The 1930s vintage Clarion midget tube radio. Exactly like the Auburn. Got a hairline crack here. Looks like it was one there. But overall, I think that'll work. I'll let you guys be the judge. Oh, look how cute it is. <laughs> okay, it's time to finish up the uh, chassis here. I'm gonna replace these three capacitors here. I do have some electrolytic capacitors I'm gonna replace. These are some cheap ones. I bought some Sprague Atoms I'm gonna put in here instead of these. And there's a few wires that need to be rewired. So let me do that and we'll see what it looks like after I get it done. We're getting closer and closer to the finish. Oh boy. Okay, I changed the capacitors in here. Put some orange drops on here. So I've got the uh, two electrolytics here and the two uh, bypass caps down here. Here's the uh, AC cap I mounted on here. I put some liquid tape over here on this wires on this coil here because uh, some of the wires were getting frayed. So I just coated that up there to protect it. I'm going to use this plug, and this is a polarized plug. This is made to look old, but it's new. Same with the cord here. It's got cloth covered, but inside is rubber. See that? Also going to put a fuse in here. And I'm going to put it in this hole here. Oh! There happens to be a hole right there. So I thought I'd use it. See if I can fit a fuse in there. It's gonna be a tight fit, but I think I can do it. <laughs> okay, I've completed the chassis. I added a fuse here. There's a fuse in it! And I rewired some of these uh, wires from the speaker and the output transformer. I'll show you those in a bit. Seems to work okay. There's the fuse I put in there. It's one of those mini fuses. Screw in. Here's the wires I put in there. So that's all looking good. Okay, let's have a little bit of fun here, shall we? Yeah. I thought I'd test out this plug here to see if this works. And we're gonna power this up on DC and AC. If you look at this plug here, I'm going to use this configuration here. It's got the B minus and B plus at 90 volts hooked up uh, to these two pins here. Then it's got uh, 32 volts AC or DC 
hooked up to two points through a 25 ohm 2 watt resistor here. So I just thought I'd try this, see if it would work. So we're going to get our 90 volts from here and we're going to get the 32 volts and we're going to use AC out of uh, directly from the wall here. The AC, now the box is hooked up to the variac. So I got one end of the power hooked up to the 25 ohm resistor and the other end goes to uh, the B minus and the end coming off the resistor goes to this pin here. Now our 90 volt B minus will go here. I'm confused. The 90 volt B plus goes here. I'm confused myself. We'll hook up our meter. We'll hook the meter up for the 90 volts. Be careful! And we'll hook up this other meter here to the uh, heater pins. Be careful! Okay. Now I'm going to turn the uh, box on. You can see we got uh, 87 volts hooked up to the uh, radio here for the B+. Plus. Now I'm going to turn the variac till we get 6 volts over here. And this is see if this radio will play through the voltage applied through the uh, special connector using AC and DC. Pretty cool, huh? Let's try it. Here we go, folks. You can see it's moving. One volt. Three volts. Working. And you're going to get a risk-free trial of Dr. Pincus's vitamin D3. Again, this is only available to you listeners, and only if you call this toll-free number. It's 1-800. Heater pins are working at 3.8 volts. And keep in mind, if you call right now, you'll also call... Still got a steady 87 volts on the B+. Plus. Let's go up to uh, 6 volts on here. And remember, you have absolutely nothing to lose here because Dr. Pincus's vitamin D3 formula is guaranteed to be safe and effective. There you go. Back. And when you do call and place your order today, you're Great. And now what? Look here. Now what's the point of this? So if you lived out on a farm, you could hook this up with batteries and have a good working radio. And I read somewhere that there was even a special connector you can put into your car and put the radio in the car and power it up there and drive around with it. Oh, brother! You know, let's take that. I want to take that same kind of... There you go. I thought that would be fun trying that. Success. Very cool.
Well, I had to replace the RF coil. The old one had an intermittent problem where sometimes it was open and sometimes it wasn't. And I tried to fix it, but remember when I told you I put liquid tape on it because it had lots of frayed wires? <coughs> well, that was a big mistake because trying to unwrap the wires, everything was stuck together and the wires kept breaking. <laughs> oh, brother. I tried to rewind the coil, but it failed to work right. So I was kind of stuck. But then I found an old coil in my stash, which worked perfectly. And it was better than the original. The moral of this story, don't put liquid tape over your coils. That's right. Lesson learned. Well, tragedy struck suddenly and swiftly today. I was drilling out a hole for the uh, fuse and the acrylic cracked. So sad, so sad. But shed no tears for old Buzz, for I ordered two of these because I know I was probably gonna screw one up. <laughs> so I went and made a new one. And the rest is history. I'll give you a sneak peek here. This one's actually better than the original one. And you'll see that in the reveal. And that's coming up right now. Hold on to your hats, folks. Okay, here it is. The 1930s Mystery Auburn Radio. Now this radio was found in the trash and not in a five and 10 cent store. But it is a million dollar baby. It was the lucky April shower. It was the most convenient hour. I found a million dollar baby in a five and ten cent store. The rain continued for an hour. I hung around for three or four. Around a million dollar baby in a five and ten cent store. She was selling China. And when she made the The crowd got wise. Incidentally, if you should run into a shower, just step inside my cottage door and meet the million dollar baby from the five and ten cent store. Love comes along like a popular song, anytime or anywhere at all. Rain or sunshine, spring or fall, say you never know when it may say hello in a very unexpected place. For example, take my case. Million dollar baby from 
Well, that should do it for today. We'll see you next time. This is Buzz. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.